What is up, everybody? It is JT Sports. I am back to you guys with part two of my college football week 12 preview and prediction. Previously, I talked about Ohio State taking on Michigan State and Iowa State matching up against Oklahoma. I forgot to upload the audio version of those episodes on the podcasting platform, so I apologize for that. So you're pretty much getting two episodes compounded into one. We're going to be talking about Oregon matching up against Utah and pretty much the Pac-12 game of the year and Arkansas taking on Alabama. So if this is your first time listening to the JT Sports Podcast, welcome. I appreciate you for tuning in. Make sure that you go ahead and follow me on all of my social media platforms. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at JT Sports underscore. Once again, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JT Sports underscore. And lastly, make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, which is JT Sports. We have Oregon currently 9-1 and one on the year, taking on 7-3 and three Utah. This game is going to be played on ABC with a 7.30 p.m. Eastern time kickoff. Utah is a three-point favorite going into this game. Now, Oregon defeated Washington State last week 38-24, to and Utah took care of Arizona 38-29. to And Utah has gotten pretty hot over the last couple of weeks you got quarterback cam rising who has been one of the best quarterbacks in the pac 12 this year he's thrown for 1852 passing yards 14 passing touchdowns to only two interceptions and ever since he's taken over for charlie brewer this utah Utes team has looked completely different on offense they feature two really good running backs you have tj pledger who ran for 119 rushing yards on 25 attempts was averaging 4.8 yards per carry and also had two touchdowns they also have running back Tavion Thomas if he's able to play then this is going to be a really um, formidable one-two punch that Oregon is going to have to deal with Right now, Tavion Thomas is currently listed as questionable for this game with a undisclosed injury. He missed last game against Arizona. Utes fans are hoping to have him back on the field in this big primetime matchup against Oregon. Now, Utah has gotten incredibly hot, and this is the right moment to get hot. You're going into the month of November. November is probably the most important stretch in college football, and this Utah offense um they are 15th in college football and points per game they're scoring 35.2 per game in points they are averaging 437 yards per game they also on defense are really good they're 51st in america in points per game allowed with 24.6 and they also are 38th in yards per game allowed now utah is a power football team okay this isn't a team that is going to wow you through the air they're not going to throw the football 50 60 times a game this is a power oriented Utah Utes football team they run a lot of 12 and 13 personnel with a lot of heavy tight end sets sometimes they'll have two tight ends on the field oftentimes they'll have you know maybe three tight ends on the field and they want to run the football down your throat and they also can beat you through the air as well if you want to come up and play run and stack the box they also have a pretty good core of wide receivers on the perimeter a lot of speed they have a really big physical and downright nasty offensive line and if you're looking at the perfect team that was a perfect matchup for Oregon it would be Utah and a lot of people have this misconception about the Pac-12 that the Pac-12 isn't really all that physical of a football conference is more of a finesse conference because it's on the west coast but the Pac-12 this year has played some really good football in terms of playing style and physicality like you look at UCLA UCLA also was a team that matched up really well against Oregon and 
one thing that UCLA and Utah both have in common is that both of these two teams were favorites heading in to beat Oregon. And Oregon has been 2-0 this year when they have gone into games where they have been underdogs. Remember earlier in the year when they pull off the upset against Ohio State, they weren't favorites to win that game. They also weren't a favorite to beat UCLA and they won both of those two games. Now, we know how talented Oregon is on the defense side of the football. You got Kayvon Thibodeau. You got a really freakishly athletic defense. As a matter of fact, I think that Oregon may have the second most athletic defense in all of college football behind Georgia because Georgia has the monster that is Jordan Davis and a bunch of X-Men on that defense. But Oregon also has a bunch of freakish athletes on their defense. And I'm really excited to see how their front seven matches up against the offensive line of Utah because Oregon is a team defensively that's really fast or able to get out really quickly and oftentimes when I watch Utah this is a team that isn't afraid to get physical with anybody so for Oregon you pretty much have a similar identity offensively than what Utah has pretty much, even though you kind of go about things a little bit differently. I don't really think you run as many heavy sets with as many tight ends as Utah does because Utah will go 12, 13 personnel at times. But the run game definitely is the identity of this Oregon football team led by running back Travis Dye and quarterback Anthony. Anthony Brown. As a matter of fact, Anthony Brown had 123 rushing yards, one touchdown to 17 carries last week against Washington State. And Travis Dye had 88 rushing yards, 4.9 yards per attempt, and a touchdown on 18 attempts. And my biggest question for Oregon is going to be, Is Oregon going to be the team that defeated Ohio State earlier in the year? Is this going to be the inconsistent Oregon team that we have pretty much seen for pretty much the whole entire year? Because that's my thing about Oregon. Like for Oregon, they're currently ranked inside the top four of the college football playoffs. And I don't have any problem with that. There are a lot of people who feel like Oregon should be in the top four. I'm not in that majority. I feel like Oregon definitely should be ranked amongst the top four teams. just that a lot of people don't really feel like Oregon has been that dominant as they should. And I kind of understand that because you were kind of in a couple of dog fights a couple of weeks ago. You were in a dog fight with Cal, which is one of the worst teams in the Pac-12. You pretty much handle business against Colorado. You handle business against Washington State. But when you're ranked highly by the committee, a lot of people expect for you to dominate. And Oregon hasn't really dominated the way a lot of people expected them to. And this is probably the biggest test that they're going to have all year because they're most likely going to end up facing off against Utah again in the Pac-12 championship game. And I'm really excited about this game, man, because... I feel like a lot of people don't really pay attention to Pac-12 football. I feel like I watch more Pac-12 football than a lot of people do because I live on the East Coast. I live in Florida. So if you're watching Pac-12 games, you're pretty much up until what, like 12 a.m. in the morning. But I'm just a football fanatic. This is all I this is all I really do, really. I'm in college, so all I really do is do schoolwork and watch football. Or if I can't catch a game, I go ahead and watch some replays and I really like the potential matchup that we're going to have in this game because you have two physical football teams who are really prideful on how good they are on the offensive line and I feel like this is going to be a really good football game now I feel like this is going to be kind of like a dog fight I don't really feel like we're going to see a lot of points scored in this game I feel like we probably will be in the low 20 range but when you look at Utah's defense Utah's defense is all also underrated as well this is probably one of the best defenses in the Pac-12 this year and when you look at Oregon 
most of the reason why they have been inconsistent this year has been because of quarterback Anthony Brown. And if Oregon is going to make a legitimate run at winning the national championship this year, Anthony Brown is going to have to play outstanding. And he hasn't played bad in my opinion, but he's kind of been average. And if you're going to try to win a national championship, you can't win it with average quarterback play. You need above average to elite transcend it level quarterback play if you're going to be able to compete for a national championship against a team like a Alabama or Georgia. So for Anthony Brown, he's going to have to have a big game. Now, when you look at the Utah run defense, this Utah run defense is kind of in the middle of the pack. They're 58th in America in rushing yards per game allowed. They're along 147.6 yards per game, but they do have a pretty good tandem of running backs. They are pretty solid on the defensive side of the football. And when you look at Oregon, they have a really good run defense. They're 21st in American rushing yards per game, a lot with 117.4. So this is going to be a really fun matchup for me to watch like yeah, I know a lot of people would prefer to see both these two teams score 50 and 40 points on each other, but I think that the low scoring matchups this year to me have been more exciting because you always end up going into the fourth quarter and wondering, okay, which team is going to be able to put the dag or, or is this team, even though they kind of been struggling, are they going to be able to find a way to punch it into the end zone and be able to win the game? And this game is kind of going to be a dog fight. It's going to be scrappy. It's going to be physical. You know the weather prediction, the weather conditions probably are going to be football conditions. You know, it's probably going to be really cold and whatnot. I actually got to check the weather report right now. So I'm doing that right now as we speak. I think when I looked at it earlier, it said that it should be somewhere around 50 degrees. Right now, the weather is reported for this game to be, or I can't even get it to pull up right now. It's supposed to be, um, yeah, so this game is supposed to be around like 30 to 45 degrees, so it's going to be pretty cold, so it makes for some really good football, and I feel like the best football games are the ones where you have freezing weather, you, you can see, you know, kind of the cold air of the players breathing on the field, and also, hopefully, we get some better camera quality, because... Everybody, for some reason, seems to hate the Pac-12, and I understand why the Pac-12 hasn't really been that good as a conference as a whole this year, and on top of that, you know, the camera quality for these Pac-12 games have been kind of grainy, they haven't really been the best quality, so ESPN came out and issued a statement on that, hopefully they get that fixed and they get that cleared up, and with this being a prime time game, you know, the camera quality should be up to par, so everybody's going to have their eyes on the Pac-12, the Pac-12 hasn't really been in a lot of big prime time matchups really, so I'm really excited for this game, I'm going to take Oregon to win this game. Um, I was really close to picking Utah. As a matter of fact, I had Utah winning this game up until now. I decided to change my mind. And the reason why I think Oregon's going to win this game is because I know Oregon doesn't win pretty. They don't win in impressive blowout fashion the way that you would want a team ranked as high as them to win. But at the end of the day, they still win and they still are a really talented football team. And I kind of feel like a lot of people forget that because Oregon isn't blowing people out. But many people got to remember that Oregon has one of the more talented rosters in all of America led by Kayvon Thibodeau who potentially could be the number one overall pick in next year's 2022 NFL Draft. So I'm going to take Oregon to win this game. 24 to 20 is going to be my final score prediction in this game. This game is going to be scrappy. It's going to be hard fought. You're going to see a lot of impressive plays inside of the trenches at the line of scrimmage. I'm going to take Oregon to win this game. So you guys let me know who you guys have winning this game down in the comment section down below. If you are watching this on YouTube, make sure that you guys go ahead and check out the JT Sports Podcast. Every video that is uploaded on the channel is also available on audio format on all podcasting platforms down in the description down below. So you guys can go ahead and check that out. Last game we have to talk about, we have 7-3 Arkansas taking on 9-1 Alabama. This is going to be played on CBS 
3.30 p.m. Eastern Time kickoff. Alabama is a 20 and a half point favorite going into this game. Now, Arkansas defeated LSU in overtime last week, 16 to 13. Alabama played New Mexico State and crushed them 59 to 3. Now, I've been really impressed with Arkansas this year, and I'm more impressed of what they've done over the last couple of weeks when they defeated Mississippi State and they defeated LSU because you guys got to remember, there was a point where Arkansas was highly ranked. They defeated Texas when Texas at the time was ranked 15th in America. They defeated Texas A&M. And after that run, they kind of had a gruesome stretch in October when you had to play Texas A&M, then after that, you had to play Georgia, Ole Miss. So they had a pretty tough slate last month. And at one point, you know, a lot of people are starting to get off the Arkansas hype train. And pretty much some people thought that Arkansas season was going to kind of falter and go downhill. But Sam Pittman has done a really good job riding the ship. And when I look at Alabama, I definitely feel like this is a game that Arkansas definitely could potentially push Alabama in because Alabama hasn't been the Alabama teams of the past. This is an Alabama team that isn't really all that good up front when it comes to the offensive line. And defensively, I don't really know how much I trust Alabama secondary. Now, Alabama is a 25 point favorite for a reason. I'm not going to deny that, but I definitely feel like there are definitely some positions on that Alabama team that Arkansas potentially could exploit. Now, I couldn't really, you know, break it down using the numbers and the analytics because when it comes to Alabama, the numbers and analytics ain't, aren't really reflective on how I feel about this defense. I kind of feel like this defense, when they played against LSU, I kind of expected them to be way better against the run. Davis Price pretty much ran the show. So I kind of feel like their run defense has been vulnerable boy at times I also feel like their offensive line hasn't really been all that great and the reason why I can't really use the numbers to break down this game is because it's kind of skewed between you know the New Mexico states of the world when they play them and the Texas and nums of the world and whatnot so Basically, from what I've seen in Alabama, I see a team that isn't really that dominant up front on the offensive line. So if you're Arkansas, you want to be able to get pressure on Bryce Young. And I definitely feel like that 3-3-5 defense would be a pretty good defense to play when you're going against Alabama because the 3-3-5 primarily is meant to, you know, help defend against the pass and teams that like to throw the football a lot. But I also really feel like there are some vulnerabilities when you run the 3-3-5 because you only have three down linemen and you're going to need your three linebacks to be able to get outside and cover the edges and that's something that you know, Arkansas has kind of struggled with. They don't really have that speed at linebacker to be able to get out fast and be able to cover those edges. So when I look at Alabama, I feel like Alabama probably should have a pretty good day on the ground. They probably will put up a lot of points offensively, but I also feel like Arkansas is more than capable of being able to match any points that Alabama is able to put on the board because I'm not really that high on the Alabama defense as most people like. Yeah, I know you guys Anderson you got a pretty good defensive line but Arkansas also has a pretty good offensive line as well even though it got train wrecked against Georgia because Georgia is on a different level right now when you got monsters like Jordan Davis like I'm not really going to you know say I'm not really going to judge Arkansas based on that game but Arkansas's offensive line has played pretty good so far and on top of that they got like four or five running backs that they all like to rotate in and on top of that, K.J. Jefferson has been money all year for this Arkansas Razorbacks team. As a matter of fact, he probably has been the third best quarterback in the SEC this year behind Bryce Young and Matt Corral. So when I look at K.J. Jefferson, I expect him to have a big impact on the ground. And when you think about it, you know... The last time that Alabama faced a true dual threat quarterback a couple of weeks ago was when they played... Tennessee and Hendon Hooker had a pretty good day 
for Tennessee going against his Alabama defense until Alabama started to turn things up a notch in the fourth quarter. So I definitely feel like if KJ Jefferson is able to have success running the football for Arkansas, it's going to open things up and it should open up the passing game. You got Traylon Burks, one of the best wide receivers in America. And I look at that Alabama secondary and I'm not really sold on it, man. Like this Alabama secondary has kind of been a big question mark for Alabama for the whole entire year haven't really been sold on their corner so I definitely feel like if the ground game can get going and they can use that to open up the passing game I expect Arkansas to put up a lot of points on this Alabama defense and I think there's a potential upset brewing in this game so LSU had some success running the football on Alabama. My question is, can Arkansas have success on the early downs? Because I don't really feel like Arkansas is a team that's built to convert on third and long situations. And also, on the flip side, can Arkansas get off the field on third down? Because this Alabama offense is pretty efficient. They take what the defense gives them. It's like... It's like, you know, pass here, pass there. It's not a lot of big plays when they're just trying to sell out and try to get big plays every single play. Like, this is a pretty effective and methodical offensive attack that Alabama has with Bryce Young. So, for Arkansas, you're probably going to be putting a lot of third and short situations, probably going to be putting a lot of third and four, third and medium, third and five situations. And I wonder if Arkansas is going to be able to get off the field in those situations because I feel like that can be really big and on top of that I also feel like for Arkansas you're gonna have to find a way to make sure that you don't allow Alabama to just maw you through the ground because I feel like Alabama this year when they've been at their worst has been when they haven't really been able to lean on that run game so when Alabama hasn't been able to lean on that run game and they get into games when they're in one-dimensional situations I kind of feel like that's kind of something that Arkansas they can get Alabama into those spots and they can shut down that run game I think if you can make them one-dimensional you put yourself in a pretty good position there now I'm not saying that Alabama's not capable of being able to maul you through the air because they can and when you look at Arkansas there has been a couple of games this year where their defense has really had a lot of answers but primarily Arkansas's defense has pretty much struggled against the run this year so if you're a Razors backs fan that's pretty much my biggest question about Arkansas heading into this game just how effective is the run defense going to be and can you get off the field in those third and medium situations because if you're in a third and four or third and five spot there's still the whole entire playbook that Alabama can use on you they can still choose to you know throw the football or they can run the football to pick up the first down and there has been a lot of games where we've seen Arkansas kind of look like they've been outmatched defensively when it came to stopping the run so I really feel like if they're going to have a shot at winning this game it's going to have to be making Alabama beat them through the air and not allowing them to control time possession just run the ball all game on them so I'm going to take Alabama to win even though I'm going to be rooting for Arkansas to win this game. I do feel like Arkansas shouldn't be taken to the root shed, even though they got blown out by Georgia. Georgia is right now a better team than Alabama. Alabama hasn't been as dominant as Georgia has. So I think Alabama probably wins this game 38 to 28 is going to be my final score prediction in this game. I'm going to take Arkansas to cover. I don't think they're going to lose by 20 and a half. I do think that Arkansas probably could keep things tight at some point in this game until Alabama ends up breaking it open. So you guys let me know who you guys have winning this game down in the comment section down below. And I appreciate you guys for listening to this episode of the JT Sports Podcast. Make sure that you guys go ahead and leave a five-star review on the JT Sports Podcast if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts. Also make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel for more NFL videos and college football videos. And I will see you guys with another episode of of the JT Sports Podcast.